Welcome to your electronic poll roster book tutorial. When you arrive to your assigned election district on election day, locate your green poll pad case. Each poll pad case will have a tag on it, identifying the election district. Once confirmed you found the correct poll pad case, you can start to open it. Press down on the two latches to open the box. Once you open the box, you're going to find two poll pads. You're only going to be using one poll pad to check voters in. The second poll pad is only to be used in case the first one becomes inoperable. Make sure you have the correct pieces. You're going to have a poll pad, a base, a stand, a charger, the ID tray, and last but not least, your stylus. Now that we confirmed we have all the correct pieces, let's assemble it. First thing we're going to do is take the iPad. We're going to place it gently face down on your table with the Westchester County sticker facing the correct way. Next, we're going to take our stand. Halfway through the circular part of our stand, there's retractable pieces. Squeeze them in and place them face down in the center square of your iPad. Gently twist a little bit until you hear a click. So, so far, this is what we have. We are then going to take our stand and place it into our base. Please make sure when pushing down on the stand that you don't push from your iPad, that you push down from the center circle to make sure it's in securely. Next, we are going to take our ID tray. The easiest way to do this is to face the arrow in the tray facing away from you and sliding it behind the left-hand side of the iPad. Next, we have our stylus, which is going to fit into the circular hole of your ID tray. Last but not least is our charger. We first want to plug our charger into our iPad and then into an outlet or power source. And here is the correct assembly of our electronic poll roster book. Once you've plugged in your charger, your poll pad home screen will appear. Tap the P to get started. Once you're on the home screen, confirm your polling location, election district, and that the check-ins read zero in the morning. If any of these are incorrect or the check-ins do not read zero, call our office as soon as possible. After confirming everything on the screen is correct, tap get started. In this video, we're going to look up a series of voters in order to get a better understanding of how to process voters correctly using our electronic poll roster book. As you can see, the poll pad offers two ways in which we can search for registered voters. We can scan their voter card or manually search the system. The first voter we will locate is Franklin Roosevelt. Let's use manual entry. This is our search screen. The most accurate way to search a voter is to input the first three letters of their last name and the first three letters of their first name. Once we've located the correct voter from our search results screen, tap on their name. You must now turn the poll pad around so the voter can confirm all the information is correct. Once confirmed, tap accept. The voter will then sign their name on the signature line. Two election inspectors, a Democrat and a Republican, will then confirm that the signatures match. Once confirmed, each will initial a box and hit submit. You have successfully processed Franklin Roosevelt. Issue the voter a ballot and direct the voter to the privacy booths. As Franklin is at the privacy booth marking his ballot, he makes an error. 
He will then bring his ballot back to the sign-in table. After voiding his ballot, we can issue a replacement. Let me show you how this is done. In order to void a ballot in our system, we must bring up the voter's file. We see in the search screen, it shows the voter has voted. On the voter's screen, we are going to tap Spoil Ballot, and then type in our password. We are now on the Spoil Ballot screen. Tap the ballot to spoil, choose the reason, and then finally tap Spoil Ballot. This has successfully logged the spoiled ballot in Franklin Roosevelt's file. We can now issue Franklin his replacement ballot. For this example, this voter requested an absentee ballot, but preferred to vote in person instead. You will see that the banner will appear in red and read issued. When we tap into the voter's file, we are going to hit Office Approved Regular Ballot and continue to process the voter. In this example, we see that the voter appears in the search screen in blue. A banner appears over the voter's name that reads ID required. This means in order for the voter to cast their vote on the voting machine, they must show ID. On the right hand side of the screen and also under the voter's name, it lists all the acceptable forms of identification. If the voter shows you an ID, tap the corresponding box and process the voter. If the voter does not present an ID, tap no ID provided. A red banner will then appear on the top of the voter screen, directing you that this voter must vote by affidavit. Hand the voter an affidavit ballot and an affidavit envelope, then follow the prompts on the screen to confirm that this voter voted by affidavit. If a voter comes to the wrong election district to cast their ballot, there will be a banner on the screen that reads Wrong Election District. Tap Correct Location to easily give the voter the information on their correct polling location. As you can see, at the voter's request, we can also text this information to their smartphone. For this example, when we had the voter confirm all their information on the screen is correct, this voter let us know that they have an address change. We have to use the election district finder to see based on the voter's new address what election district they would vote in. In order to do so, we will tap menu on the upper left hand corner and look for the dot that says election district finder. We can then tap in the voter's new address to figure out where they belong. If it is the same election district, go ahead and process the voter. Note that you do have to make this address change on our challenge report. If it is not the same election district that the voter is registered in, you must direct the voter to their new location. If you're having a problem locating a voter that claims to be registered, you can use the advanced search option. Here we can search for a voter in a variety of different ways, like date of birth or by address. You can ask the voter their date of birth and it will pull up all the registered voters with the same date of birth. If we search a voter by date of birth, we may be able to locate any voters that may have a name change, a hyphenated name, or even in this case, a misspelling. Now that election night is over, let's take apart our electronic poll roster book. 
We're first going to remove the charger from the power source and then from the iPad. Pull out your stylus, slide out the ID tray, and remove the stand from the base. Gently paste your iPad face down, squeeze the prongs from the stand to release it. Now let's talk about putting them back into the case properly. Place your ID tray in the square cutout inside the case. Next, you're going to find your stand and fold it. This sits right on top of the ID tray. Roll up your charger. Take your stylus. Turn your base upside down. And last but not least, place your pole pad face down in the cutout. Close your lid. And your pole pad is ready to go. This concludes your e-pole book tutorial. Thank you for your service.